Now, this Sunday sees Man United head to Man City in the Manchester Derby. We can look ahead to that now with rock and roll superstar and, of course, big City superfan Noel Gallagher joins us live on Drive. Hello, Noel. How are you? Good evening. Pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm very well. Thanks for coming on. What are you up to? What have you been up to over the last couple of weeks? What have you been doing? Uh, no idea. <laughs> I mean, there must be something you've been doing. Have you been gigging? Have you been no, no, not shopping? Been uh, I've been shopping today, actually. Oh, OK. What'd you um, get? Uh, I got um, I got a denim jacket mm. and I got some trainers. <laughs> I got uh, some from Stone Island, if you must know. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. What about who buys your underwear? Do you get that? Uh, my mum still buys that. For me. <laughs> Here's a question for you: When you're touring, how mm. often do you have your hair cut? And do you have well, do you have a barber with you at all times? No, uh, I have to get mine cut every kind of three weeks so I don't go away for more than three weeks except when I go to America which is usually about six weeks and I have a guy in LA that will do it if it gets out of control which okay. it usually does All right. yeah. you know a lot of footballers when they go to big tournaments they fly their hairdressers out with them yeah I'm not doing that <laughs> no, I can't see the point of that no. um, listen we've got you on to talk about this game at the weekend we were talking <clears throat> earlier at the top of the show and I, hand on heart I, I just can't see Man United getting anything out of it and Betty made a good point Some, sometimes he doesn't know how by hook or by crook United do manage to nab something but the difference the gulf between the two teams and the fact that the key or a couple of key players from Man United are missing as well I can't see anything other than a City win can you? Um, well I don't think it'll be a bloodbath why? Uh, why, why do you say that? Well, I just think United have got a pretty good record at the at the Etihad really recently. Uh, I've been a, obviously apart from last season. I I think I think it'll be I think United will park the bus heavy because they're not going to come out and play us. Luton came out and played us the other night and got annihilated. And I think as we've seen as the season has unfolded, the blueprint to get anything from City is to just play on the break and that's it. And I think United uh, have been good at that. I'm not sure they'll come out and play us, um, but I'll take it. I mean, we're in we're in the the running has started now for us, and this is the this is the start of the big month. This is the this is the month that defines our season, and uh, it, we have to win. And I'll take any kind of win, anything doesn't really matter to me. But penalty in the last two seconds will do. Mm. Um, I can't unless City score early and it turns into a free for all. But can't see it. Uh, but. Any, any kind of win, but United, you know, every time United, uh, every time United are down and out, they always seem to kind of annoyingly get somewhere. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rashford turns up tomorrow night. Put that ridiculous mm -hmm. interview out the other day. Um, so, but fascinating. You know, I mean, I'm not sure what's in it for Man United. I mean, there's not even local pride anymore because it's kind of, you know, so oh, there is there, there is pride at stake, surely. Well, I mean, it, I mean, it's only the pride that City would have had in the nineties, where you, for for you know for a few days you can kind of lord it up a bit. But United and City are in different leagues at the minute. Agree. No, I think I remember you saying before that you don't enjoy these games. You can never quite relax. And even no. with the the gap between the two sides, as you said there, I mean, Manchester City are, are way out ahead. Can you still not relax when you watch this on Sunday? No, I hate them. I'd rather that I'd, I'd take any, like I just said, I'll take any kind of win. But, you know, like when we went to Old Trafford a couple of seasons ago when United got that contentious goal, that, was it offside? Rashford, was it yeah, offside? the Rashford one. No, yeah, nobody, nobody gave United a chance that day, that day, you know, and nobody gave United a chance when they were 2-0 down at half-time and we were about to win the league. So, you'll know yourself, Bentley, that it's a derby. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. So, I'd have thought, Pep will be saying that to the lads. I don't. I don't think. I mean, look. Hopefully, it's four nil at half time, and we can all relax and have a great time. But I'd be. I'd be amazed if it's, there's more than one goal in it. Let me. I still be amazed. I'm guessing you saw the, the Luton game the other night where Kevin De Bruyne. Yes. I think it was four assists, mm -hmm. and Haaland got five goals. I mean, yeah. I know you could say it's only Luton, but still, no one else has gone there and done exactly that. Who, who do you think? I'm guessing it's those two that you think are, are most key to your success on Sunday. Out of those two, who do you rely on heavily? De Bruyne. Yeah, I tend to agree because with you. because uh, that's why Pep's been resting in the last couple of games because he knows he's going to play every game. He's going to play against United, Liverpool, Brighton, Arsenal, and Villa. There are next five games. He's going to play in all those games, and uh, I think we, you know, we were we were up there without without um, without Erling. Uh, I mean, we were up there without Kevin as well, of course. But I think De Bruyne 
is the key to to it all. I think I think City this season are really really good. We're without De Bruyne, but I think with De Bruyne we're very 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 good. I think it was difficult to keep us out over ninety minutes. But you know, Erling is. I mean, if he comes back smashing in five. It's like God, that's you know. nuts. You speak about yeah. Erling Haaland, and you're right. I mean, he's had these injuries this season. He's missed a fair few chances. But when you look at his numbers still this season, he's got 27 goals and 30 in all competitions. I mean, that's just frightening. You, but he, he would strike me as one of those players that would take quite a while to get back into it. Do you know what I mean? Because he's mm. a big lad and he, strikers, are, they, they, they feed off confidence. And not like where KDB came back and he was straight into the groove. You know, um, I would imagine... I, I, th- I mean, I might have said to you on this, so I think it, I think it would have taken him longer to get back. But... Um, I didn't expect him to come back and be smashing at tricks in every week, but um, I mean, he was great the other night and you know, he was, he, he wasn't like, it's not like he's bending him in the top corner. He's getting it on target and he's smashing it through the keeper. So he's still not, he's still not back to his best. You know, he's still playing the percentage shots where it's just get it on target and see what happens kind of thing. But um, I mean, t- tomorrow's, I mean, Sunday's going to be great. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, it's going to be fascinating. Uh, let me, let me ask you, we've spoke before about, how it was perceived that Man City did the treble. And I, I don't think, I mean, I'm quite pleased about it, but I don't think enough was made about it when you compare it to what it was like when Man United did it. Man City could do the treble again, the double treble, right? Which is easily on. And you're probably favourites, one of the favourites to win the Champions League. You're probably favourites to win the Premier League as well. Are you even thinking about that? Because, I mean, it's just obscene to even think for one moment Man City could win the double treble. I don't, I can't see it. I think if you spoke to... I'd say 99% of City fans, the thing that we'd like to do is win the Premier League four times in a row because it's never been done. Yeah. But with the, with the, um, you know, with the, uh, with the respect shown for the previous trouble, you've got to understand that Sky are the biggest broadcasters of the thing and the people that set the tone on that programme are all either Liverpool or Man United ex-players, you know, and on BT Sports, Real Ferdinand. So it doesn't, doesn't surprise anybody at City that it wasn't given the respect it deserves. But if, and it's the second time it'd been done. It's not like it was the first time it'd been done. So, but I think that if, um, if we do four in a row, we've never seen that before. Um, and you'd have to say we were possibly the greatest Premier League of all time, uh, Premier League team of all time after that. Do, do you think that it, there is a worry? Obviously you've got, you know, one of the greatest managers, not just of, of the Premier League, but of of all time managing your club. Do you think if you did get four on the bounce, he's more likely to leave the club in that wonderful position? Is that a worry I, for you? I don't think so. You know what? When I, when I talk to him or when I hear him speak, I, he's given no indication that he's in any way jaded, bored or tired of being in England or I know he misses the weather but that aside he's never given me a single indication that he's looking elsewhere I mean I don't know for sure but um, I think he just loves he loves being a manager look if you look at him on the touchline against Luton you know when when the goals are going in this is a guy that's done it all Mm -hmm. you know multiple times and he's away at Luton and he's celebrating God he loves the players he loves he loves the club Um, I don't see him leaving. I don't see him leaving at the end of his contract next season. I just don't see it. I mean, I might be wrong, obviously, but I don't see it. No, I can't see it, especially with Klopp going as well. You might think, oh, I might be able to. But I don't know where. But I don't know where he would go. He's not going to go back to Spain. He's not going to go to Germany. England. He's not going to go to Italy. Well, I. Man, I've said I've said to you before. Mm. I could see him being the England manager, of course, because I know he loves English football. But he has hinted that, that to you, hasn't he? Well, well, he's in international football. Not look, don't quote me on that. But it's not like <laughs> not like not, not like England. Do you know what I mean? But he's 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 quoted in in books that have been written about him. He'd love to manage Brazil, I think he said, or Holland. Do you know what I mean? So, but um, I just don't see that there's any indication from anyone that you speak to at the club that he's looking elsewhere, or there's or that even City are looking ahead of what they're going to do after he leaves. I, I mean, I think things are pretty solid there. Yeah, that's think... for my opinion, anyway. Can I ask? Sorry, you, you know you've got these um, these cases coming out over a hundred cases of financial fair play breaches. Wait, me, me, that's <laughs> can't, that's unproven. It'll never be proven in a court of law. <laughs> um, but do do you think? And I don't think this will happen. But if the unthinkable happens, and Man City get relegated, I don't know to the, the third team in English football, or even out of the Premier League, do you think he's more likely, more or less likely, to stay at City? 
If I was a betting man, I'd say be more than likely to stay. Okay. Agreed. And that's and that and that's only because I, I you know, I you speak to people then, there's no indication whatsoever that there's any trouble on the horizon there. But then again, I suppose Liverpool would have thought that with Klopp. So I mean yeah. you, you don't you don't really know, do you know what I mean? But um if I if I was a gambling man, I'd say you'd stay perversely to, you know, you know, win every single game in the championship by eleven goals or something. You'd be upset some kind of that's a stupid record. <laughs> No, I want to ask you, we were talking earlier about this fixture, Manchester United versus Manchester City, and we were asking if it's the biggest derby in England or the biggest game. What do you think? Um, I know the biggest game in England. I mean, they they move with the times. The biggest game in England now is Liverpool versus City. And the oh, biggest game of the season... You think it's bigger than Man United, Liverpool? Oh, come on. You, you're pathetic. That game, <laughs> that, 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 game, that game up until Liverpool... Uh, Came up. That's it means fun. nothing. It's a, it's a top four game. The biggest game in England over the last five years has been City Liverpool. The biggest game of this season is going to be City Liverpool at Anfield until City play Arsenal at the Etihad. They're the biggest games. It moves with the times. Mm. The biggest games in the 90s weren't Man United Liverpool. It was Arsenal Man United. And we all tuned in to watch them and we were all and we were all rooted for one or the other. Liber when Liverpool Man United becomes about you know, uh, being then the top two teams, then it, then it might be the yeah. biggest. It's the biggest, maybe it's the biggest historical game because of they've got their fan websites and all that. It's an, They've been playing it down. They, they, you know, United always play the derby now, no, it's not our biggest game. And then they come out, they come out the tournament of the Etihad and play like it's not their biggest game, right? Man, uh, Liverpool, Man United, it's, a, it's, it's all in the past, forget it. Yeah, I, I suppose, right? It pains me to say. It. I suppose it's always going to be about the, the two teams that are trying to become Premier League champions. Yeah, well, yeah. I remember when remember when Man United and Chelsea were going out. Yeah. Those were the games yeah. that you know you looked for it on the fixtures and you were thinking, right, it's clear the diary. We're going to stay right. in that night and watch it all. So at the minute, it's Liverpool, you know, and it's Liverpool uh, City, and then City Arsenal, and you know those Liverpool Arsenal games. To be fair, have been great the last two or three seasons. Yeah. Okay. But I don't think I don't think the Liverpool Man United game. People only really tune in to see Man United get battered, really, don't they? Not, not, not everyone. Um, <laughs> la, la, last couple of questions. Where are you watching it on Sunday? Um, well, I'm not going to go this one. I'm okay. going to sit this one out. I'm going to watch it here in, uh, in, in, my, in my gaff in London with the kids. Okay. And uh, what the score be? 1 0 City. Wow. Okay. So yeah, I, listen, I, mean, I, think, I think they're going to park the bus. I, def I think they're going to go hard at parking the bus. And right. it's kind of it kind of suits United because United fans, half of them are not even bothering going to watch it. The other half are saying they're going to get battered. So yeah, I I think United aren't going to come out at all and play. Um, but I think it'll be I think it'll be grim until City score. And the earlier we score, the better it's okay. going to be. Uh, I'll leave you with this. Uh, Darren Bent is an Arsenal fan. Of course, Arsenal got a chance of winning the Premier League. Guess who he wants to win this game? He wants City to win, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. that's because yeah, well, that's that's because of you, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. See, no one understands that. Yeah, <laughs> no, he understands that, but not the result. <laughs> Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein, Monday to Friday afternoon from four on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.